Okay, this is the third and the final video segment that I'm doing on this gyros gyroscopic model in CATIA. The first two which does the problem in CATIA and generates the information that, that I want has already been posted. So in this, in this segment, I will talk about the analytical approach to this problem in case you did not want to use CATIA or you, you did not have access to CATIA and you had to do that analytically, manually, how you would do this. So this is a problem from Peebler's Dynamics book. And uh, let me remind you what uh, what this was about. So you have a turntable here, you can see, which turns at two radians per second. And in it, there's embedded a bar like that, which is itself turning at uh, six, uh, six radians per, per second with respect to the disk. So not only the disk is rotating, but the bar is rotating with respect to it at that. What the idea, the idea behind this problem is given the information about the length, dimension, and the, the mass of this bar, what are the moments that are, act, uh, that are acting on the bearings of that, uh, of that uh, uh, bar, axis of that bar, okay? Now, uh, so when you have an object that rotates with respect to another object which itself is rotating, you're dealing with a gyros 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 gyroscopic effect, and I mentioned in the earlier videos that uh, examples are prevalent. For example, a helicopter's rotor is turning or propeller is turning, and the helicopter is maneuvering, maybe rotating in a certain direction, etc. Or the, for example, the flywheel of a car is is obviously rotating, and the car takes a turn. Or a uh, stabilizer, uh, torque stabilizer in a ship, where the ship is uh, have a rolling mo motion because of the waves, and the uh, the stabilizer is basically a gyroscope or, or or a disc that's rotating, and it it is the same type of problem. Now, how do you find the moments uh, exerted on this bar that we are interested in? Well, you have to use the equation of motion, which is the the the, the a different version of uh, Newton's uh, Newton's uh, uh, second law, uh, which gives you some of the moment in different about different axes equal to whatever you see on the right hand side. Now on the right hand side you have the angular acceleration of the rod. That's these three numbers: these three, omega x dot, omega y dot, omega z dot, and the angular velocity of the rod. Now these are absolute uh, absolute uh, uh, entities. In other words. These uh, uh, angular velocities and angular, uh, angular acceleration must be with respect to an inertial frame of reference, okay? Now, that is where the problem comes. In other words, we have given the information that you had, I just showed you here. Uh, how do you get these things? And these are not obvious. Now, so the purpose of this video tutorial is for you to show uh, how that is done. By the way, uh, the IXX, IYY, and IZZ are the uh, moments of inertia with respect to some principal axis. So we're assuming that uh, uh, XYZ here is the principal axis. Okay? All right, good. So the, this, uh, let, let's consider the situation below. So you have a fixed coordinate system. Fixed coordinate system means the inertia, it's also referred to as inertial coordinate system. So uh, uh, this big X, big Y, big Z, a big Y, big Z is fixed in space in direction. But then you also have a, a, a coordinate system, little x, y, z, that is attached to this uh, uh, attached to this uh, to this bar. Okay. Uh, so uh, notice that uh, when you look at the unit vectors big I, big J, big K for the inertial coordinate system, these do not change either with respect to in, in, in direction or magnitude. The magnitude, of course, is always one. But the direction does not change. However, when you look at little i, little j, and little k, the magnitudes of these are still one, but the, the direction of it is constantly changing. So, the big question is, how do we calculate the change, the, the, the derivative of little i, little j, and little k? Because the, the derivative of big i, big j, big k, they're all zero. Direction does not change, magnitude does not change. But here, little i, little j, little k, magnitude is change, magnitude is constant, but direction changes. So that deals with perhaps the second most important equation in dynamics. 
usually if you ask somebody what is the most equation in dynamics, it's really f equal to ma. It's only f equal to ma, which is true. This, the thing that you see up here, the thing that you see up here, right there, see this? This is probably the second most important equation in dynamics. And if you didn't have this, none of the stuff that we're doing with equation of motion, Newton's law, works for complicated situations, which is bodies, basically. <clears throat> so here's the situation. The, our inertial coordinate system is drawn here again. Big X, big Y, big Z. Okay? And uh, there is an object, there is a rigid body attached to it. Attached to it is a little x, little y, little z that is rotating in space with some coordinate system. Okay? So little x, little y, little z is rotating in space with some angular velocity. Uh, omega that you see here, this this omega, the one with uh, over here, this omega, and the object itself, okay, uh, may be rotating at some uh, other angular uh, angular velocity too. Now, in general, these two do not have to be the same. The big omega and little omega that do not have to be the same. Okay, so uh, here's the situation. Suppose, suppose that we have a vector a of t in space, and this a of t, when observed by somebody in the big X, big Y, big Z coordinate system, inertial coordinate system, they see a vector, and they see a change. They see a change of that. I mean, basically, if you have the coordinates of these things, you can differentiate it, and you get the, the chain derivative of big A. Now, with respect to the coordinate system little x, little y, little z, which is uh, rotating with coordinate system with an angular velocity big omega, an observer who sits in that coordinate system sees a changing but a different way. And this is written here. In other words, the derivative of big A, the derivative of A with respect to the inertial coordinate system is equal to the derivative of big A with respect to the coordinate system that is rotating, little x, little y, little z, plus an extra term which is due to the rotation of that coordinate system, and that is the angular velocity, angular velocity of the coordinate system x, y, z, which is omega, crossed with the entity A. Now, in this context, my x, y, z, in the context of the problem that we are doing, this problem, I'm assuming that x, y, z sits with the bar and it also rotates with it. If that happens, then one can say that the angular velocity of the, the coordinate system is the same as the angular velocity of the, of the rigid body, little omega, and that reduces to whatever you see at the bottom down here. This is called a body, uh, bo a body uh, fitted coordinate system, body attached coordinate system, okay? So there it is. This is what we need. Now notice the situation that we have. We have, in the next uh, slide, you see that we have little i, which, which is the unit vector in the direction little x. And this was for somebody who's sitting in the xyz, little xyz coordinate system, this little i does not change because it has the same direction and the same magnitude as far as an observer who's also sitting in the little x, little y, little z coordinate system. However, for somebody who's sitting in the inertial coordinate system down here, obviously this little i is changing because it's rotating. The magnitude of it does not change, but the direction of it changes. So uh, we, can, we can assume a is this i, we put it over here. In that equation that I showed you, the second most important equation in dynamics, I replace a with i, so it tells you that the the, the derivative of little i with respect to the inertial frame is equal to, well, this is zero, that doesn't change, is, is equal to the omega, angular velocity of the, the body crossed with omega. And the same thing is true for little j and little k. I have not drawn little j and little k here, but if we draw it, this is what you're going to get. Okay, so how do, how do we solve our problem? Remember, what we need to do, we have to find the 
the angular velocity, angular velocity omega of the rigid body with respect to the inertial frame of system, that's not a big deal, and the angular acceleration of omega with respect to the inertial frame of system, big X, big Y, big Z. So the, the angular velocity of this bar can be written as a vector, and it looks like so. Phi dot, uh, phi dot in the J direction, capital J direction, plus theta dot in the little k direction. Okay, little k direction. Let me use arrows here instead of, uh, yeah, good. Now, uh, notice that this is fine. This is the absolute angular velocity of the bar. However, it's written in terms of something that's fixed, constant, that J, big J, and something that is changing with time, the little k. So what we're going to do, we're going to write everything in terms of the coordinate system, little x, little y, little z, that is actually rotating. And that's very simple. It's simply rules of trigonometry, phi dot, you can write phi dot uh, times uh, a sine of theta in the i direction plus phi dot times cosine of theta in the little j direction and of course plus theta dot k, little k. So basically we have written the absolute angular velocity of the bar in terms of the coordinate system little x, little y, little z that is rotating. Okay, now what we want to do is to find, want to find the angular acceleration of this thing, of this, uh, of this velocity vector, angular velocity vector. Well, uh, this is uh, simple because it's the some a bunch of vectors, we can do that. So we're going to do derivative with respect to little t of first term, which is phi dot sine of theta little i plus d dt phi dot cosine of theta little j plus d dt theta dot little k. Now we have the product of two things. Each one of these you can use the product rule. So let me write it as uh, three separate terms. So it's d dt of phi dot sine theta i plus phi dot sine theta d i d t. Now remember, these are all as observed, although I'm not going to write it anymore as observed by the inertial frame of reference. So when I write something like this, it means that as observed by the inertial frame of reference. Okay? Uh, I will not write this thing for the other, uh, the other terms, but you should realize that these are derivative as observed by the inertial frame. So plus d dt phi dot cosine of theta little j plus phi dot cosine of theta dj little j dt. And again, I said that I'm not going to write as observed from the big X, big Y, big Z. Plus d dt. Uh, this one is uh, uh, theta dot, okay, times little k, like that, right? Plus theta dot dk dt. Okay, now remember, once again, this is as observed by inertial frame of reference. Uh, might as well add it here to x, y, z. Now, let's clean it up. So the angular velocity, angular acceleration vector, as observed from the inertial frame of reference. Now, when you look at this term, for example, uh, phi dot is constant because the turntable is turning at a constant speed, so it's going to be derivative of sine, which is cosine of theta, theta dot, because you have to use the chain rule. Remember, theta is changing with time, therefore you have to use a chain rule, times i plus phi dot 
sine of theta. Now, remember, in the, two, the, the previous transparency, we actually found this, okay? Uh, and it came out to be this, this term, this term that you see there came out to be omega crossed with i. Do you remember that? Right there. Uh, sorry. Right there. Right there. Okay? Right here. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, do the rest of it. Sorry. I inadvertently lost all my notes, so let me go ahead and uh, uh, write it quickly here. So, uh, I'm sorry when I changed the slide, I think my, my notes were lost because I was using my pen. So, first of all, the angular velocity came out to be uh, phi dot, right? It was uh, sine of theta, little i, plus phi dot, cosine of theta, little j plus theta dot little k and d omega dt if i erased uh, had all those terms so when i clean it up it's going to be a phi dot it came out to be cosine of theta theta dot times i and uh, the fact that uh, i told you the, the derivative of di dt the derivative of di dt, we already had an expression for it. Uh, it was um, uh, uh, times sine of theta times, remember it was like this, di dt as observed by xyz. These are things that I erased, so let me write it again. Plus, uh, uh, this next one was minus. It will be minus because when you take the derivative of this, it's going to be phi dot. Uh, sine of theta, derivative of cosine is minus sine, that's why I wrote it like that, theta dot j plus phi dot cosine of theta uh, dj dt as observed by uh, inertial frame. And the last one is, uh, the last one came out to be uh, 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 theta dot uh, theta dot times uh, dk dt. Now we use those formulas from the previous transparency. I'm not going to go there because I'm going to lose all these notes. So it's going to be, uh, let's start with this. We just leave it the way it is. Phi dot theta dot cosine of theta i plus phi dot sine of theta. And we already figured what this thing was. This was omega crossed with i. Uh, this one, by the way, as observed by the inertial frame 2. I forgot to write it. Uh, plus, okay, there's a minus here, minus phi dot theta dot sine of theta j, j, uh, plus phi dot cosine of theta, and the derivative of this is going to be omega cross with j. And finally, uh, plus theta dot, uh, derivative of this came out to be omega crossed with k. Now, I take this and stick it in there and do the cross products. This is, this is algebra. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, if I want to do that, it's going to take a long time. But uh, you can write everything down neatly and do the cross products. Cross products. Uh, for example, I cross with J, if you clean it up, it's going to be K. J cross with K is going to be I. And K cross with I is going to be, is going to be J. Stuff like this, okay? So you do it, do this, clean up, and here is what you're going to get. If you do this thing and clean up, 
you will be surprised to see that the expression is going to be very simple. Okay, it's going to come out to be some expression like this. Let me write your over. Uh, yeah, it's going to be the. Uh, let let me actually write your omega first. I don't need it, but, but I want you to remember what it was. It was uh, phi dot a sine of theta sine of theta i plus phi dot cosine of theta j plus theta dot k. This was uh, angular velocity vector, and uh, the after do the, doing the algebra. The acceleration amazingly becomes simply phi dot theta dot cos theta i cos theta. I'm going to clean this up. Okay. Uh, let me clean this up. Well, okay, let me write them. Phi dot theta dot cos theta i minus phi dot theta dot sine theta j. Okay, and that means omega dot x is this phi dot theta dot cosine of theta omega dot y is negative phi dot theta dot sine theta and omega dot z obviously zero because there's no k component here and by the same token omega uh, omega x is this phi dot sine theta Omega y is phi dot cos theta, and omega z is equal to right there, theta dot. So these are the things that are going to go into the Euler's equation. And sub these, sub these in Euler's equation, and you're going to get your mx. And y, m z, in terms of the right hand side. Now uh, there is something I want to show you. Uh, I'm not going to do that. However, I show. I want to show you what happens. Let me clean this up. Uh, some stuff here. Oh, for some reason, my. Uh, So let me, there, okay. So uh, what I have in CATIA, what I did for you, I, uh, I actually created that mechanism, and then eventually I asked it to plot your omega x and omega y, and of course omega z was zero. And these are the graphs that we got, okay? Over here, I have plotted the analytical solution, and you can see that these are showing the same thing. So this one goes with uh, that, and this one goes with this. Now, one last thing that I wanted to mention to you, you might say that, okay, I know how to do this, and I, I can put it in my uh, uh, moment, uh, my uh, Euler's equation, but what about those i, x, x, i, y, y, and i, z, z? Actually, when you look at the bar, I'm going to draw it like this for you. This is your little z, and there is your little x, and there is your little y. The bar sits here. And if it has a length L and mass M, I, uh, uh, Y, Y, this is from basic strength of material using the Parallax theorem, you can get m l squared over 3. m is the mass of uh, that part. i z z is also m l squared over 3. 
but I x x because it's filling on the x axis is zero. So there is no issue in actually uh, getting the uh, the expression for m x m y open z. And this wraps up the the the, the, the three uh, video segments that I've done. Uh, the first two dealt with strictly CATIA doing getting this information on CATIA, and the uh, the last one was, if you did not use Katia, how would you have to come up with these absolute angular velocity and absolute angular acceleration? It's tough because this is three-dimensional. Three-dimensional dynamics is not, you know, it's not very easy. Okay. Take care.